Chivalry 2 has been out now for over a year. And since the Steam release, there is a lot of fresh blood in the game. If you are new to the medieval slasher genre, the combat mechanics might seem a bit intimidating at first. But fear not. Chivalry 2 has a pretty low entry barrier for an online multiplayer PvP game. And with some basic knowledge, it shouldn't take too much effort to get the hang of it and have a decent time. For this video I wanted to come up with something that new players can apply immediately in their games. This is not just some general, just get good at everything advice. No, this is a summary of what I think are the 10 most important things that can be applied easily and immediately and will boost your performance by a lot. So let's get into it. The very first thing you want to do after you boot up Chivalry 2 for the first time is to go into options and max out your field of view. While in many other games, field of view is often just a personal preference thing, in medieval slashers more FOV is simply better. It is absolutely crucial to see your opponents at your sides to be able to defend against their attacks. This tip actually ties in with the first one. Chivalry 2 can either be played in first or third person, whereas third person gives you a massive peripheral view advantage over first person. I have made a whole video in which I compare both views and talk about all their advantages and disadvantages. If you're interested, the link is in the video description below. Every time I play in first person for a while and then switch to third person, it literally feels like I'm cheating. The advantage you get from the increased field of view is immense. I'm not saying that you can't do well in first person, don't get me wrong, you definitely can. But third person makes it much easier. It lets you play more aggressive in positions you couldn't safely be in in first person. So I highly suggest trying out the third person view in this game if you haven't already. It might be a complete game changer for your performance. This is the only tip on this list that is not immediately applicable in team objective matches, I promise. But I had to include it. Chivalry 2's combat isn't very hard to learn compared to Chivalry 1 or Mortal Kombat. Nonetheless, I highly recommend to practice the mechanics from the combat tutorial on a dual server, at least for a bit. Duels help you to understand the combat system and train your muscle memory way faster than team objective modes ever could. In a simple 1v1, you can solely focus on combat mechanics without any interferences. No archers, no random projectiles, no objectives that you need to take care of, and no threat of someone hitting you in the back. You also don't have to walk back into a fight for 20 seconds every time you die. Obviously, there are things that duels won't teach you, like movement and positional awareness. That you can only learn by playing actual team objective matches, but it makes it easier to focus on positioning if you don't have to think about every single combat input anymore. Defense in Chivalry 2 is very strong. That's the reason a big percentage of damage dealt on the battlefields doesn't happen in Chivalrous duels, but rather via sneaky backstab attacks. Actively look out for players that have their backs turned to you. You will notice that there are free kills everywhere on the map. Most people are just insanely careless when it comes to positioning. Special attacks are great for hitting people in the back, as they are often the highest damage attack in your arsenal. It might not be perfectly obvious at first, but in Chivalry 2 overhead attacks are in most cases faster and deal more damage than horizontal attacks. As a trade-off, they often have a little less reach. So if you don't need that extra bit of range, I suggest using overheads as much as possible. They are also safer for your teammates in crowded areas. Another advantage of overhead attacks is that people often mindlessly spam horizontal counters because spamming LMB is somehow burned into their muscle memory. Horizontal slashers are good if you fight multiple opponents, otherwise try using lots of overheads. Chivalry 2 has 36 different melee weapons to choose from. Unfortunately, the game doesn't tell us any weapon stats like damage numbers, wind-up time or reach. But even worse than that, the only information that the game gives us in that context, and by that I mean the little overlay in the armory, is really bad. Often misleading and sometimes just plain wrong. If you want to learn about weapon stats, I suggest using the community-made weapon spreadsheet. 
It contains weapon damage, reach and speed for all the different attacks with every weapon. It might not be perfectly accurate data, but you will get a good idea of how the different weapons compare to each other. Oftentimes, when I play team objective, and this occurs mostly on defense, I feel like I am one of only a handful players on my team that actually tries to play the objective. In general, the deserting mechanic does a pretty good job at forcing players to be at least somewhere around the objective, but there is still lots of room to not be directly on it. I think it might be some innate human instinct that makes people want to move forward to make progress and not stand on the same spot for too long. You will also see lots of players switch to the attacker side every game, just because attacking and going through the different objectives is more fun for them. But anyway, what I want to say is, play the objective. Dueling somewhere far on the side while your team tries to defend a point has close to zero impact. Sometimes a friendly reminder for your teammates via chat to defend the objective can also go a long way. One of the most important mechanics a team objective player in Chivalry 2 needs to know about is active parry. And even though this is briefly shown in the combat tutorial, I still want to point it out here and clarify because of how important it is. Whenever you repost or counter an attack, your attack will auto parry all incoming attacks for like half a second, which is extremely useful. So if you find yourself against multiple opponents at once, don't just stand there passively, holding up your block and wait to get disarmed. Instead, parry the first attack and repost, or perform a counter, and take advantage of active parry. Just be sure the follow-up attacks you try to active parry are within the first 0.5 seconds of your repost. You can also delay your repost a bit. The window in which you can perform a repost after a block is pretty large. Treat your stamina bar like a second health bar and use it to enhance your defense. If you have more to spare, go for reposts rather than more risky counters. And use dodges. Every class in Chivalry 2 has a dodge ability, which is very useful in various situations. I think dodge is heavily underutilized by most players. I personally also don't use it enough. It is extremely helpful when repositioning yourself against multiple opponents, so they don't get to your side and back. Dodging is arguably easier in third-person view, because you can see your hero model and where exactly its hurtbox starts. Chivalry 2 is as casual as an online PvP game can possibly be. There is absolutely zero pressure from your team towards you to do well or reach a certain KDA. So just take it easy. Revive teammates whenever you can, use your heals, don't be toxic and try to avoid dealing excessive team damage. You and the people around you will have more fun, I guarantee. But anyway guys, that's it for this video. If you enjoyed watching, then please leave a comment and a like and hit the subscribe button for more Chivalry 2 and other medieval slasher content. As always, thank you all for watching and see you soon.